Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on Adobe Live. My name is Alana, I will be your host today. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the new Adobe Live YouTube channel so that you can stay up to date with the latest streams, participate in the Adobe Live community, and so much more. I'm so excited to be here because this week, in honor of Black History Month, Adobe Live will be featuring a lineup of Black creatives who are going to be sharing their creativity and showcasing their workflow with us on our live streams. So without further ado, it is my sincere honor to be introducing today's guest, artivist, children's book author, illustrator, I could go on and on, the amazingly talented Nicholas Smith. Hi, Nicholas. Hi, Lana. How's it going? <laughs> it's going good. I'm so happy to have you on the stream. And thank you so much to all of you who are joining us in the chat. Please feel free to say hello to us. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Our moderators will be pulling your questions from the YouTube chat into our Behance chat so that I can relay any questions or any love that you have to share for Nicholas as he's working today. But please let us know where you're shooting in from. We'll give you guys a little bit of time. Hello, Storm. Hello, Penny. Hello, Wade, our moderator. Hello. Hi, Oliver. And Nicholas, you have such amazing work. I'm so excited Thank for you. you to get into things. Would you please just give us a brief intro of who you are, what you do, and what we can be seeing from you today on the stream? Absolutely. Um, so my name is Nicholas Smith. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Um, so I am an artist. I'm an artivist, um, which is artist and activist. Uh, I'm an illustrator, concept artist. Uh, I designed magical theme parks for over 10 years. Wow. And uh, right before the pandemic, decided to become a freelance artist and, and do this thing full time. Uh, so wow, that's, that's what crazy. I do now. Amazing. Yeah, and so uh, we're you know we're gonna do a little bit of uh, some art making today. So so basically, like th that whole period of time of like you know when I was in the architecture field, um, I it was a process of me realizing that art is my passion. Art is what I should be doing. Um, I started the Sunday sketch series where I would just, you know, make one art piece every Sunday. Nicholas, I'm so sorry. Could you bring a visual up of like your work on yes. your website maybe to like pair sure. what you're talking about? That'd be great for us to like follow along. So this is a little bit of my stuff here. Um, so basically I just have, I've been, I've just been like really practicing digital painting for 10 years. Wow. Uh, it's a practice. Um, and I'm always constantly trying new styles and things like that. But uh, I feel like what I have kind of landed on is is semi abstract digital painting, like digital, like a, lo a lot of portraits, uh, things like that, but just like speed painting. And, and that's kind of what I want to do today is just like go through my speed painting process, make a portrait. Um, no, that's amazing. And your style is so right. well defined and developed. And I think it shows really well in the work on your website as well that we can just like see a quick glimpse of. So Thank whenever you. you're ready, Nicholas, we are ready. I think the chat okay. is ready. Whenever oh. you're ready to just jump into Photoshop and just show us your process. This is going to be great. All right. Wonderful. Um, so here's my Photoshop. I put I put up um, actually a couple of shots close-up shots of this painting that I did yesterday, um, acrylic on canvas. Um, so what I wanted to do was basically just, you know, create a portrait, um, do a speed painting today. And I put these images up because I I really like to create digital paintings that, that feel like oil paintings or, you know, acrylic on canvas type of paintings. And I'm just like always fascinated by textures. And if you, you know, look at paintings up close, like you'll see millions of little details that like, I just love it. And I, I, I don't really like, you know, a lot of like clean lines and, you know, flat style in terms of making art. It's very messy, it's sketchy, unfinished, painterly, that kind of thing. So no, yeah, definitely. That's yeah. So I'm always like looking at details like that and trying to recreate it. So that's kind of what I'll do, like in the process of making whatever we're about to make. 
Okay. Um, I so will... these are from these are from two traditional paintings that you that you did yesterday. You uh, said one. Yeah, it's actually two shots of of one painting. That okay, I did two yesterday. shots of one painting. Okay, yeah, awesome. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm 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 gonna constantly be thinking about that as I'm making this thing. I figured I would just like make a portrait of a of a a man. Um, I would say like I'm just gonna say like an old man from Cameroon. Um, my okay. ancestors are from Cameroon. So how interesting. Um, especially okay. during Black History Month, I'm always like trying to pull, you know, um from my ancestry, my roots, and you know, make something um in that along those lines, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. I think that's so cool because I was really wondering where you would draw your inspiration from for your portrait that you're going to be doing. So that's yeah. really cool. And there and there's tons of like I a lot of times I'll just pull up a lot of images of you know um whatever you know sometimes I'll just type like old people or uh -huh. you know, Cameroonians Africans you know things like that and and just look at a bunch of details um so I'm just gonna kind of jump in and and do it yeah please um, by all means we're, we're so, going on this ride with you this is okay great. so what I typically do is um treat it like a canvas like this all started for me, artist therapy, um, just wanting to put some paint on a canvas really quickly and don't worry about like it being perfect or like, you know, pre-sketch and defined and making it exact. Um, just throw the paint down and I kind of do this add and subtract method. Um, right. So if you can see, like I have my little color box here. Mm -hmm. um, and I also I have like, uh, my favorite brushes in the world, um, which are oh. available um, online somewhere. Um, oh, okay, awesome. So yeah. these are the brushes you have just like at the ready. So because you're always going back to them. Yes. And this brush in particular is like my favorite brush of all time. It's like a dry brush, kind of sketchy. Um, I love this brush so much. It has changed my life. <laughs> wow. Um, okay. It gets it. you the texture that you like, I guess yeah it's it's just i just love it um and wow. so i what i typically do is like i said just you know i use large kind of like the uh, a large brush size and just start to throw paint on the canvas um okay and so i'll have like a you know like a face you know um and what i do is like this add and subtract method where i'm just put as much more paint than you need and then a lot of times i'll use the erase of for the the exact same brush whatever paint brush i'm using use it for the erase and then just kind of chip away like ah, that, that kind interesting of thing. so for for me that really that one thing helps me immensely like to not get bogged down on like okay this has to be perfect right away like it's just it's just an approximation of like it's something there's a there's a a masterpiece in there uh -huh. right there and you're gonna just, uncover it <laughs> yeah it's like i have to just like let it come out and it's kind of like a sculpture kind of thing where yeah um you know chip away at what you don't need interesting you know you're going through this process and you you're talking about speed painting and i'm seeing some questions in the chat about just like so the general concept of speed painting and please correct me if i'm wrong is it really about like you said just throwing the paint on the canvas and not is it that act of not being so precious with every single thing and it's really about just yeah. quick iterations just keep going keep going keep going and that's what makes it that's the speed part of speed painting yeah i think that's pretty much it you know it's just like don't overthink it <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, that's such great advice for all creatives i i know because i'm like don't, don't yeah i think it mm -hmm. um i'm so with the box here with my color like the the box is right there so mm -hmm. i can quickly just grab you know darker colors throw that on um, mm -hmm. lighter colors throw that on it like we were looking at before there's so many you know when you're when you're throwing actual paint on canvas like there's I, I like to to grab a lot of different colors and mix it and then throw it on. So um, you end up with so many different shades and 
um, it's just like all blended together. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm constantly like grabbing um, multiple colors here from this huge giant gradient, like it's gonna, I, I think like the end result will be um, kind of what I'm thinking of like um, something that feels like like an oil paint, you know? And yeah. a lot of people will, will ask me like, you know, can I buy the original to that piece? I'm like, it's mm -hmm. a JPEG. Uh, <laughs> Photoshop. Um, That's so cool. You yeah. know, we speaking of Photoshop, I know you're working in Photoshop today, but Evie in the chat did ask if you also use Fresco by chance at all. Um, no, I've, I kind of just like only stuck with Photoshop. <laughs> like, okay, no, I that's great. Yeah, I haven't really like played around with other stuff. Um, yeah, it's pretty much just been that. So um, you're working in your sh your shadows and your your highlights and just sort of approximating where things will fall and just letting yeah. it sort of become. Yeah, I feel like you know, um, since you know, over the years of just like painting faces and things like that, like I I kind of just like will quickly in like okay there's you know the where the eyes are there's you know grab a grab a darker shade and throw that in there under the nose you know darker shade just so that I can quickly get something and then also absolutely like under the under the chin right away the neck area mm -hmm. so like I know like really quick like okay it's gonna it's gonna look something like that you know mm -hmm. um and so I'll just kind of keep doing that, like wherever if I if I have like a reference of a face or something, um, it's really just like matching what you what you see. Like if, if I see like the sun is shining on the forehead and there's just like some little flecks of sunlight or something like I'll just throw that in. Um, I'll go to the to the almost like black, not not all the way black, but close and um, just keep, honestly, it's just like millions of little, little taps that I, <laughs> that I'm just yeah. like constantly throwing it on there. Um, That's and so cool. I, it sometimes I, I'll just like, if I'm going like really fast, I'll use the, the burn tool. Um, I oh. just tap the burn tool because sometimes so what's it, that just, do? it just like, it makes it darker, like w rather than grabbing a dark, you know color over here mm -hmm. sometimes i'll just like oh i just want to like really quickly burn this area it's oh. it doesn't always give like the re the result that i want but sometimes just like okay i just want a quick dark color you know so okay i'll throw that in there okay. um really fast so it's much like it sounds it burns it'll it makes it a little yeah. bit darker mm -hmm. okay that's really cool burn, burn, <laughs> burn. <color in> there. <laughs> um and so at once once i have like kind of a um, you know a general idea i might then start to like throw in some like basically take the exact same the exact same brush um but make it smaller and ah, okay. throw in some throw in some details um of like wrinkles or something okay um, and like Again, going back to this, yeah, millions, millions of little details, right? So, um, because of that, like, I'm not very precious with like, um, you know, any anything really. Like, I'm just yeah. gonna add dots and scratches and all kinds of little things everywhere. Um, there is also this other brush that I like that's kind of like a more scratchy. Like, let me. It's like this, very scratchy. Oh, um, and is this one of your own personal brushes? Have you created all these brushes that are your favorites? Are um, these your brushes? I've made a couple of them, but these two in particular, um, I found many, many years ago. I don't even know. Oh, where. okay. <laughs> yeah, I even yeah. like collecting brushes. One of them is a charcoal that I made. That's just like, I don't know. It's just like more. Um, it's just like a regular 
circle brush, but it has just like a little bit of extra texture to it. Oh, that's really nice texture. Um, yeah. Yeah. So just always experimenting with brushes, you know. Okay. Do you sell any of your brushes by chance? People are in the chat are wondering, like, no. are your brushes available anywhere? Okay. So no, I, I haven't like made enough of them to sell. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, okay. They're mostly just like free brushes that I found. Okay. Um, and so those, uh, there, there's like a whole, I just like also like reshared them on, on online somewhere. Okay. Well, everyone be sure to be following Nicholas around social media so that you can keep up with the tools that he's using and the things that he's working on because it's all phenomenal. Thank you. And also, we've also got some more questions popping up in the chat. Um, Charbel was wondering if you were drawing anyone in particular. So I know that you mentioned that the inspiration for yeah. this person or this portrait was a Cameroonian ancestor. Just Is that just sort of yeah. the, the feeling that you're going with? Is there like a, yeah. a, a picture that you referenced maybe earlier, like yesterday or something that you're drawing from? Or this is just um, a Nicholas Smith off the dome? <laughs> I have like a lot of a lot of references that I just like been kind of in my head and kind of pulled up. So I have a few of them that I'm just like, like going back and forth, um, mm -hmm. seeing a lot of different facial features, um, styles. And so um, really like mainly like looking at, I'm always fascinated by, you know, um, cause really like my, my ancestors and, you know, how the similar, I was funny story. I was, so I was in China one time <laughs> and the there's these old chinese people who were like like examining my my facial features and like explaining to me my ancestry <laughs> and all this uh -huh. stuff and now i'm very fascinated by um just like how we share features like how i share features with um you know this you know just old cameroon you know elders who are mm -hmm. who are there right now and how like we don't know each other and you know we'll may never meet each other but we are linked you know um that's really a beautiful way of thinking of that i never really thought of having yeah. that sort of link to someone around so, the world like that yeah yeah so it's like um i just i'm always like looking at like different people and and seeing how we all are connected and stuff like that definitely um, you know yeah. nicholas i had a question yes. <laughs> i have i have quite a few questions and i'm sure more will pop up in the chat as we go along but this whole idea of your this semi-abstract style is this something that you found yourself like as a style leaning into as your career has progressed or have you always loved drawing and illustrating this way or you know were you used to be more like hyper realistic and then it has loosened up over the years like what was the process of finding this like style um I think it started off for me as like taking photos like before I even before I even like created any like digital paintings really like I would take photos and then I would use the smudge tool <laughs> and ah. just like smudge and smudge until um until it like kind of looked like an oil painting um so this is like this is the smudge tool sometimes I use the smudge tool actually still um I'll put it on 100 percent so it's uh -huh. like you know like it's very strong <laughs> Oh, okay. That's um, like the intensity of the tool, I guess. Like it'll be a much harder line, I guess. Yeah, like completely a hundred percent. Okay. Um, and so like I, I work on, you know, I worked on like Black Panther, the the film. Yeah. Um, Wakanda Forever. And like um a lot of times like I'll I'll do I'll just create um if I if I'm very quickly trying to just like edit some sort of, you know, um portrait or something like mm -hmm. like when I was working on Space Jam also and it's like okay there's monsters and okay um maybe I'll just take the smudge tool really quickly and do something like that and like when it's at a hundred percent like the smudge tool can do some really cool things <laughs> oh that's um, so cool <laughs> so like it's like really quickly I'll just make some hair or something you know um stuff like that where um 
it, it all started as just like manipulating photos to make wow. them look like so now it's just like using you know starting from scratch and mm -hmm. creating you know some type of what feels like an oil painting you know definitely that's such an interesting process because i was wondering if you had any kind of photography background honestly i'm just like oh. you know you're you uh have so many portraits in your work i'm just like i wonder if he has any sort of link to photography so hearing that um being drawn yeah. from your process and your inspiration is so interesting yeah not not really photography no my my wife is the photographer and i just mm -hmm. try and fail <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah. yeah those early explorations and manipulations that's so cool yeah. so we've, we've got some things in the chat um let's see okay so kelly says nicholas i always love your work question do you ever play with the colors of reflected light on the skin like Ava Berkowski. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that artist in particular. No, that sounds but, very interesting though. But the interesting idea of the way light plays on the skin, I guess, mm -hmm. as you're creating your portraits, you mentioned that a little I think, bit. yeah, like, I feel like I do that in a way, but that I would, I want to um, see this Ava person and see how it's done for them <laughs> yeah right um, i always learn something new from the chat so it's great <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but that's so cool and jack is wondering and i don't think they preface this as saying this is a little off topic but i don't think this is off topic they said how okay. long have you been working with photoshop like the program um well wow i guess in high school i graduated from high school in like 2003 <laughs> Um, it's been, they, I just got a notification that there's like a 20 year reunion and I was just oh, like, wow, <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. Not yeah. Enough. Right. News to uh, me. <laughs> that, that came around quick. Great. <laughs> uh, but that we had a, I didn't go to art school. I went to architecture school. Mm -hmm. Um, and so my art, my high school art classes, are like my art education and we had Photoshop then. So okay. I guess it's been 20 years of Photoshop for That's me. That's amazing. Officially. <laughs> That's um, amazing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and like I said, like, um, like right now, like I have like, I feel like there needs to be more defined detail in the eyes. So I'll take the exact same brush and um, kind of just make it smaller um, and start to add like little ah. wrinkles and stuff. And I always try to, um, you know, overlay like if, if I have a, like a super dark line I'll just um add some some lighter browns um wow. and kind of blend it together like that okay getting some nice contrast working in there that's yeah. really interesting yeah I guess you did start with a really large brush size when you were first throwing things together in this idea of like throwing the paint on the canvas so mm -hmm. things are really shaping up really nicely and you're getting more precise as you're adding more detail, I guess, right? Yeah, and remember, this is all one layer, so like. Oh my goodness, um, you're so right. I'm just like, <laughs> this, this is all in one layer. It, I could never. <laughs> it's. I think it's helpful for people to like just jump in and you yeah. know don't don't get bogged down on like a million layers and you have to have this and that. Like, if yeah. it if it's helpful, just like do a one layer painting. You know, I'll, I'll say maybe three layers because what I like to do also is like um, put a background. Like I just added a layer below mm -hmm. um, and I will um, put in just some sort of like color wash, make a big brush. I hold down shift and do some straight lines. OK. Um, nice. And so just sometimes I'll just do it like that where I, I love the texture. Um, I'll I'll use the eyedropper and grab a lighter color that is made from that and just blend some more. Um, so just like it's just helpful a lot of times to just like throw some sort of like background colory thing wash behind there. Uh -huh. um, so a two layer thing. Okay. That. Two layers is good. That's two so layers. cool. Keep it simple. I, yeah, <laughs> that's that's a great way because I'm I'm not much of a a portrait artist or anything like that so the idea of like okay just put it all on one layer is 
it's very interesting and it i think it sort of plays back into your idea of like don't be so precious with it just sort yeah. of is this is this about like uh control or anything like do you feel like you found yourself like tightening up a little bit creatively and you're just like no I'm, i need to just loosen up and just like sort of relinquish sort of yeah. control to the creative process in a way yeah that that's really um how it is it's just um it, like I said, it all started as artist therapy, and mm -hmm. I I didn't have a lot of like sketchbooks filled with stuff when I was younger because I was too, you know, nervous that it was not gonna be perfect, and mm. um, and so now it's just like um, kind of continuing with that theme of just like it doesn't need to be perfect, like it can it can all be super sketchy and just um, you know it's it's okay if it's if it's like that a little bit you know that's very very cool let's see what else we've got going in the chat i think we've got some more questions coming in keep them coming everyone will be able to see them if you put them in in the youtube chat the behance chat our moderators will make sure they get rounded up and then i'll be able to relay them to nicholas while he's working oh. this is going great so far um, so Angela in the chat says, this looks great so far. How long does it take you to finish a portrait and how do you know when it's finished? Mm. Um, great question. Yeah. <laughs> um, because like, I feel like if I, I can keep going and going and going to the point where like, I feel like, you know, it's never finished finished but that's why I, what I love about the Sunday sketches doing the Sunday sketches of like I give myself like an hour or two sometimes oh. three <laughs> um okay. and so at that point it's just like okay well I have to stop you know and just like I can't I can't let this go on forever and ever that's um, really wise of you yeah, <laughs> to so identify I, that for yourself again um artist therapy like yeah don't don't stress out about it like that sure. anything that that is involved in like being you know this process being stressful mm -hmm. um I try to avoid it yeah definitely uh, so yeah that's like one of those things where it's just like if I if if it's if it's gonna be an issue of like you know this is taking this I don't know when it's finished like I I can keep going but I don't know um I'll just like give a cut off like okay I only have this much time and whatever it is and a lot of time when I'm doing like artivism mm -hmm. there's a specific message that I'm trying to get across and it's not about it being exactly perfect like as long as the audience understands what I'm doing like this this guy might have like a hand here um doing something because I need him to express a specific thing for this for this thing that I'm doing and you know and maybe it's a fist or something like and as long as it conveys that message like right away um I won't I won't worry about spending like 30 minutes on making the fingers perfect you know mm -hmm, that kind mm -hmm. of thing that's true. Um, In the grand scheme of the message, those yeah. tinier little fixations that we might get hung up on sort yeah. of fall to the wayside in, in comparison. Right, right. So just try to make sure that that doesn't, those things don't bog me down. That's um, great. Wow, this is really coming along so beautifully. I'm just like loving this process and just like you, hearing you. you talk about your work. It's just like, I, this is my artist therapy vicariously through you <laughs> just watching this sort of becoming oh, cool. as, it, as it progresses. But I had another question for you because mm -hmm. you had mentioned your Sunday sketch series. So I was doing some looking at your work because I'm just... I, I love it so much. I'm, I've been following you on social media and, you know, did, can you let me know and let the chat know, like the Sunday sketch series, you did that for a number of years and then you compiled it into yeah. like a, an entire book after all this, like you yeah. had enough sketches to make a book out of yeah. it. Like that's it amazing. The, the five year mark, I, I made a book wow. um, and that was 2013, man. Wow. Um, so <laughs> I'm Amazing. due for like a, another book because it's been 10 years, 
Okay. Yeah, I guess so now. Jeez. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 10 years. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's time for book number two. Um, uh, but yeah, it was just like that's one of those things that really helped, you know, the the consistency of like, okay, I'm gonna just post something every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Um, even though like I'm literally like just learning Photoshop and you know, it's like 10 years ago um and you know it was just very helpful to to have like the the internet <laughs> follow yeah. along the journey yeah definitely and definitely it turned into some amazing things and book opportunities and um movie concept art opportunities and now i have a line at target <laughs> Yeah, um, right. Marvel Jeez, you have line. so much going on, Nicholas. <laughs> this crazy. is great. Yeah. Um, and all came from just like, okay, I'm just gonna post once a week and talk about what's happening in the world through the through the art. Um, and I try to encourage artists everywhere, like whatever it is that you know your art is about, it's great. But like, if if you if you aren't speaking about you know what's happening in the world maybe take a little bit of time to just like use your creativity to make some artivism and, and talk about the things that are going on. And, um, you know, like we spend so much time as, as artists and creatives, like focusing on like how to get people to see what we're making. Um, and so if we can get people to stop and, you know, look at what's happening and and how they inspire people to fix a problem that's happening in the world you know mm -hmm. um it's always it's always a huge thing so no oh, definitely that that is very those are very wise words and and i'm sure every creative will will take that um into consideration because it's you know yeah. social media is everywhere but you can use your platforms to to spread some really important messages yeah so oh, can you walk me through how you're feeling right now? You know, we're, you know, about like half an hour in, like what's, what's your thoughts uh, right now about how this is shaping up? Um, Cause I think it's great. Ooh, and I think things are going great, but like, let us into your mind a little bit. Yeah. Um, so I feel like, I feel like um, it's like, if I was doing a, a portrait, like a tribute portrait, or, um, you know, just the portrait of my ancestor kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I would feel like I I need a, a good more 30 minutes, 30 minutes more to, to kind of get it where I want it to be. Uh, more detail, definitely mm -hmm. um, in the beard or something and the hair. Um, and then looking at like, do I add another layer and put some sort of like, hats or like um oh. you know details in the in the clothing like you know um some sort of like african pattern type thing um more I'm, I'm always like trying to figure out like what other details can be added to tell the story of what i'm trying to tell um no, so that kind of thing mm -hmm. um and yeah i feel like maybe another 30 minutes <laughs> We oh no yeah i mean um, we we have some time we got so, time yeah i'm um, i'm here for this journey <laughs> i'm like like i said I, i'm doing a lot of uh um smudging still now mm -hmm. um, okay so this is the smudging process that you're talking about yeah like a mm -hmm. tiny tiny brush and um i just feel like there needs to be more more like scars and scratches kind of thing mm -hmm. but sometimes i like literally just pull up um some almost like a, a wood pattern like a, a wood texture like like there the there's like wrinkles in the skin like ah. mimic um some wood right, and another like thing yeah there's like all these like when you like when you're looking at this stuff like there's there's so many highlights and shadows because it's like actual paint, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I'll take the white and I'll kind of like go across um, a lot of the the lines, a lot of the, so, so like if I, if there's a dark line, 
um, which is like a crack or like, you know, some sort of depth right there. Like then I'll, I'll put a highlight on top of it um, to really kind of give the feel of like, okay, like this is actual paint that has been dropped on the canvas. Yeah. Um, and then just like hundreds of like little, little dots because I like to spray um, kind of like flick the paint onto the canvas a lot. Um, so I'm like always, when you're working traditionally, like you literally will flick yeah. your, your brush bristles. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like a lot of this is like little, oh, little yeah. paint. Like I might just like um, blow the paint onto the canvas or something. Oh, so cool. Um, and like that kind of thing. Um, so so I feel like I always, there's never, there's never enough like little spots and dots and stuff and scratches and that makes it feel more um more realistic to me like less digitally produced that kind of yeah, thing yeah that's so um, true yeah so it's a lot of stuff that you can't really see very well <laughs> um it's like it feels like i'm not doing anything but it's like <laughs> you kind of you'll you can appreciate it when the when the JPEG is saved and it's, <laughs> it's no, quality. definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I feel like those little, um, just those little moments and those small imperfections that you're just like really trying to like mark up and get in there are really like, like you're saying, like they seem so small, like we can't see them or something, but I feel like you're just <clears throat> slowly ingraining it into the essence of the portrait. So it, it yeah. has an effect you know cumulatively and it's just going to keep building and building so i think yeah, that's so yeah. cool um yeah so kind of like that what else and then i might just like play with again with the smudge um mm -hmm. um it's it's easy to to just edit some things like i don't know maybe he has um more of like a hole in his ear or something like that and maybe there's some earrings, I don't know. Um, maybe even here, like this is just, again, the smudge at 100%. Uh -huh. um, I might do something like that where um, it just, it pushes, it pushes everything. Like the all the skin or whatever that I've just created gets just pushed. Um, and so really quickly I can make um, a lot more detail of, anything like okay maybe he has like 50 earrings or something yeah um, that kind of thing <laughs> um and what i'll do um typically just to again like just doing things really quickly is like once there is some sort of like um once there's like an edit or like there's a, something has been created some object has been created mm -hmm. i'll just throw like a white highlight really quickly um to to give it a little bit of a kind of 3D, you know, a little bit more depth. Um, and again, I'm always thinking like, okay, just like you get the idea, like, yeah, you know, especially like also when you're when we're doing like, you know, concept art for films and stuff, and it's like there's not enough time um, to, you know, you need like 50 different iterations or something like just you know, oh. really quickly, like, here's an idea, like, maybe he has these earrings, maybe he has this. Oh, um, interesting. So this is something that you've been able to carry over into your work as a concept artist for films and stuff? Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely for Space Jam, it was like, that was, like, you know, aliens and, and monsters and, you know, all these different types of things. LeBron James as a, as a monster, like, what does that look like? <laughs> Are you we know, talking about like hun uh, like fifty or a hundred iterations of an um, idea or something? I don't know anything about. Sometimes it, it can get up to that, but usually, I mean, usually like, um, I don't know, like it might. I just sometimes I need to like whittle it down to like the, the top five, ten um, Ooh, iterations. That, that must be hard to choose yeah. from. Yeah, and so. Um, Okay, I'm gonna do something really quickly. That's uh, another thing that I do um, when I have like these, because it's sketchy and loose and like this, 
um i make edits that are sometimes like what why would you do that but uh -huh. um i'll like just take a lasso to this piece you can see this is all one layer uh -huh. um if i feel like okay this ear needs to come out or something i'll just literally cut it um and then warp and do something like that where like wow. i'm like uh maybe that's a little bit better like that you know um, oh that's so cool i never thought of doing something so, like that <laughs> i just like do things very i, I maybe they're not correct <laughs> again i didn't go to <laughs> art school uh, but yeah just, like, <laughs> just kind of do like that and then it's all now this is its own layer so i'll just like right. um, merge it back down once i like it okay um yeah so something quick like that um it's just again for 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 film stuff it, it's very helpful um to just you know do something also i i cool. love that you know photoshop can you know do oh. random things really quickly um, yeah. that's always fun oh um, yeah right just letting the program like having fun with the program and its yeah. expansive capabilities <laughs> right like all that kind of stuff and so um um this is another um brush that i like that's kind of um kind of like a dusty sandy dusty pattern um, oh, which that's I, so cool. I really like i'll, I'll add some like maybe a little bit of black dust, a little bit of, I'll, I'll do contrasty, like the black and white, and then a little bit of brown in there. Wow. Um, because like when I, if I see some, you know, there's some sunlight that's hitting the skin, um, it kind of, it kind of like does this ripple effect a lot of times on the skin, especially like older, older, um, people that have like a lot of like details and marks um, in their skin um, the sun kind of hits in an interesting way so hmm. just kind of you know going through figuring out what I like what I don't like um, oh, that's very interesting it's like a lot of what you're doing is like from what you've observed over the years and just like, yeah, just sort of things. And maybe it's just like a little moment that you just sort of hold on to. It's just like, I'd like to maybe integrate that into my next piece or something like that. Maybe yeah. something holds over for you. And Wade, our wonderful moderator says there are always multiple paths to a finished piece. To a finished piece, correct, seems to change with the times. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> So sure. we all have a lot of flexibility. Um, I, saw, I saw someone in the chat say, oh, Evie, the beauty of digital art, like we can mix it and morph it and do sort of interesting things. So it's that's also what I love about digital art. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, I'm just going to play around with maybe there's like a, some sort of... Um, piece inside the ear I don't know if I'm gonna like it but you know you just got to put um, it in there and just see yeah, you know just try it out <laughs> yeah just try it and you know you, you don't uh, have to be married to it forever yeah and that's great um yeah it's fine <laughs> um, so again there's always like also with the lips there's always so much um so many little details in the lips that um I'm just always like throwing little highlights on. Oh, definitely. Um, little cracks. <clears throat> and then always at the corner of the, the mouth is like mm -hmm. uh, a big opportunity to change the expression. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm always playing around with like, oh, does it kind of curve up, down? Is he happy is he what is he doing and then the eyebrows also like um sometimes i'll just like play around with that to you know maybe there's like maybe he's like a little more inquisitive or like you know maybe he's scared i don't know like what's going on um but the the eyebrows change that so quickly yeah um 
So I love doing that. Yeah, just like uh, those few details, like you said, the corners of the mouth and just changing the, those, that and the eyebrows, like, can completely transform the way yeah. the piece communicates and, like, someone's, like, interpretation of, like, this portrait. That's, mm -hmm. those are, wow, those are really two. They're, like, two, they seem small, but, like, they have such a big impact yeah. on that final result. That's so cool. Um, wow. Another thing is, like, I don't do this a lot, but um, the brush, the modes or whatever, I don't even know what all these things. The oh, like name. the blends or like the blend yeah. modes and stuff like that. Yeah. This is a interesting thing. I, like, sometimes I'll, I'll do an overlay um, if I need some more color and with the brush and not on 100%, but like 20% or something like that. Uh-huh. To say like okay like the lips need a little bit more you know red or something mm -hmm. um so just like like that where i'll play with it and see if maybe it's too much maybe it's fine also like the no there there's usually like you know the that you know how they say like add some warmth to the to the nose and the ears mm, okay. that kind of thing so sometimes i'll do that with the with the overlay on the brush um just to make it it's a, like a little bit lighter of a touch uh -huh. and sometimes I'll, I'll grab a light light like a cream light and do that like on one area like i feel like if the sun is over here um do something like that where it's like maybe the sun sometimes it's like a little bit too harsh and at the same time this is this is with it all on one layer so yeah it's the idea of like are, are you married to this are you okay with it just being like that then maybe do it <laughs> uh -huh. if not um i would say make another layer <laughs> and, okay and that layer on top is the overlay layer um which i love to do a lot and then like i'll do like a big wash wow. um, overlaid um sometimes that really just helps like with whatever the whatever is going on in the scene um wow. add some add a it never hurts to add an orange wash to the thing no I definitely like. <laughs> oh my um, goodness i i'm sorry we've come to a very interesting point in the stream <laughs> um yeah. i just wanted to check in with everyone we have like a little lesson 40 minutes left in the stream, but I want to let everyone know if you would like to nominate yourself or someone else to be a guest on Adobe Live that you can submit recommendations for creatives in the tab on Behance. So be sure to check that out. Um, we have seen Nicholas so far start with two JPEG images zoomed in from a painting. Yep, oh, those two there go. from a painting that he did yesterday i'm sorry i keep like repeating but yeah, yesterday just from yesterday <laughs> okay cool yesterday that he yeah. is drawing the inspiration finding beauty in the imperfections and is taking us through his speed painting process where he's working on a single layer but now we've reached this point where yeah. he's got a new layer and you just created this beautiful glow and i'm sorry layer i feel like you three you i know layer <laughs> number three this is a big moment big but moment. Oh, but is this a, did you use a gradient tool or something? Cause like, I feel like it's yeah. like darker in the top and then it's fading out. So what is that? Yeah. So this is an overlay layer. And then I just go to the gradient and this, um, not this one, not the like linear one, but the, like the radial gradient. Oh, okay. The second nice. one. Mm -hmm. And just like, I, I just like, yeah, throw it in there. Um, from usually from one angle because like wherever the sun is or okay. maybe there's fire or something something crazy is happening that is amazing wow that's alien that's spaceship so cool. yeah right space um, jam style <laughs> yeah <laughs> and sometimes it's fun to like do like some contrasting color or some just something else on the other side uh-huh um depending on whatever, again, whatever's happening in the scene. Right. Um, something like that. Um, I think I'll just keep it kind of warm-ish. And then I, so, sometimes it's like too much and I'll just tone it down to like 30%. But for okay. now, I'll keep, I'll keep it at 100. 
okay, yeah, we'll just keep it at the highest level of intensity, but you always yes. have that option to just slide back that opacity slider if you were just like, okay, I'm not feeling it anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I again, also, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. I just noticed that you were going to your history panel. So like that's your workflow yeah. for, okay, I've gone too far. Like I want to go a few steps back yeah. and just sort of like going back. Okay. Cause I'm, yeah. I never open the history panel personally. So <laughs> I'm just like, Oh, right. That's a thing. I'm just like, always like command yeah. C and total <laughs> forever. And then I undo too many times. So the history yeah. panel is very useful. Helpful okay. for me to like, I, I, I have it in my head. Like, okay, I can only go back like, you know, 30 or whatever actions or something, but uh -huh. okay. Know, I try not to bother with it too much because, you know, any, changes I can just like paint over right um but okay. yeah very cool yeah so that's that oh I should say command s you're so funny <laughs> <laughs> wait is this your first save of the stream yeah. I love that that was, that was save number one people hey this is adobe live you can't do you that. can't make it up <laughs> <laughs> you saw like it, you saw it here first <laughs> he did not save until this moment no yeah mm. <laughs> don't do like me you're so funny um, okay oh i'm on like 70 percent, 100 percent. oh yeah i'm still on overlay i'm like why is it doing that okay oh. normal 100 percent. back to this um i still feel like there needs to be a lot more um kind of like gray hair something oh interesting okay so more dots more more flex more hair um i might just like make a tiny tiny brush um size brush mm -hmm. and then add it in there like that um and then i'll just see if it's if it works if it's a lot if it's too much maybe if he needs like a little beard thingy um, ah, so really just point by point, just like just placing them and just seeing how that shapes up for you. That's so cool. Yeah. And again, like this is with speed paint, like if if this wasn't like a speed painting and I, I knew I needed this to be um, with iterations or something like that, I would do a, a, a layer for the, you know, maybe a layer for the hair or something like that. Okay. Um, but you know it, it's quick yeah i so. mean this is a speed painting session this is yeah this is what this whole theme of this stream is about so this yes. is a really cool and unique process for everyone to see so this will be a awesome. completed piece in 30 minutes <laughs> it's like you heard uh. it here first he said <laughs> come out with a finished piece but you have to be sure that you're yeah. following him on his <laughs> socials to make sure he posts it somewhere <laughs> I know. So, or else you'll miss out on it but then you'll be able to say if you're in the chat lives like i saw that being created <laughs> yeah so i i really like i really like how it's shaping up yeah i mean geez um, i'm so blown away by this this is amazing thank you and and is this um I mean we're we're so far along now, but do you ever um think too much, I guess, about the cropping of the portrait? Like this is like nice and tight, like neck up, but do you have a preference usually or like, oh, I wanna show more of their shoulders or something like that? Or is that just sort of like depends on what the piece is for or, or something like that, how you sort of frame things? Yeah. Um yeah, I think it. I just kind of have it in my head on, on what what it's gonna be from the beginning, mm -hmm. um, and then just go you know go off of that. Um, I do a lot of times. I do change it up, um, and in that case, I'll make a duplicate. Probably like, let me just group this really quick. Okay. So this these two are together. Okay. Um, and then I'll just do a new group. Um, and then on this group, I'll like, maybe I'll think like, okay, maybe it needs to be like that, you know? Oh, okay. That's and a really then, seamless way of scaling it. Okay. And then from there, it's just like adding the extra, you know? Uh-huh. Um, again, I, I keep 
pressing I for eye drop and uh -huh. grabbing grabbing like colors that I want. Oh, that's great. Uh, okay, so using that eyedropper tool for just quick grabbing and so that you're not like going crazy trying to search for colors. Yeah, just and that's there's all once you once you're like 20 minutes into the piece, all the pretty much all the colors that you need are here somewhere. So just grab grab a dark thing or some, you know. That's oh. awesome. The um let me stretch the overlay layer. Um, Yasmeen in the chat says, thanks everyone. It's already 11.23 p.m. here where Yasmeen is, the oh, first wow. and hopefully not the last live stream I attend as I found it super useful. Wow. Oh, thank you, Yasmeen. Yeah, thank you for tuning in, Yasmeen. So cool. That is awesome. <sighs> um, another thing, <laughs> um, because all of this um is very loose and whatever i do the rubber stamp a lot so for me that's s and then option if i feel like say this i needs to be moved over a little bit then i'll mm -hmm. just like literally just do like that and move it over there <laughs> oh my um, goodness <laughs> and i'll just like look at it and see like is that better or worse i think it's better like that Oh, how interesting. Um, so rubber stamp is fun for me. Um, oh, that's also so cool. With the hair sometimes, like I'll just like rubber stamp. Oh, this hair needs to be a little crazier. Um, that kind of thing. That's I don't do that a lot. but mm -hmm. So that lets you take uh, what you've already uh, put on your canvas and literally just like replicate it in a different area wherever you place your stamp, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. So once you hold down option... Mm -hmm. um and click here um let's give him three eyes or something you know that <laughs> okay. kind of thing got it <laughs> that, got it <laughs> you know these things can go in many different directions yeah yeah definitely yeah. um so yeah and then like i said i i love um i love just having extra stuff around like like i said very um unfinished sketchy um you know maybe there's a little extra i don't know just extra strokes around there yeah definitely um, that is then, amazing more dots and paint no. flex and stuff nicholas um, we've got another question from the chat yes this is a good question because now I'm also wondering um, <laughs> from Mace Graphics. They're wondering if you are using a pen or mouse and then other people are like, oh, I thought he was using maybe like a tablet with a pen. So what what are you using? This is a welcome in two of Awesome. Um, it's my it's my baby. Uh, so I'll use either this or like the um, or the Cintiq that I have. Um, but yeah, just. Oh, that's so cool. I'm going to draw right now like this. <laughs> so that's cool. So just, wait, is that completely wireless? It's not like, uh, it's not hardwired? Um, I do have a, uh, a connected wire right now. Oh, okay. Um, but it's also Bluetooth if I take it out. Very cool. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, Still. that's a great question. So now we know. That's so cool. Welcome into us. Awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to keep adding some more details. At this point, I feel like once I get to this level of like, okay, it's, I have the image there that I like. Um, it's just like continually adding more and more details here and there mm -hmm. um, to really <clears throat> give it exactly what I want it to, to be. That's pretty amazing. Um, thank you. You know, I um, have... a. Uh another question for you mm -hmm. um <laughs> one of my my own questions yes. but you've done so much uh, amazing work and you've got to see your work on so many different um levels and in so many different ways so like um probably blown up on a poster or like a mural size or something like that like is there a favorite mm -hmm. way that you've seen your work like on your apparel line or like what 
Ooh. what sort of is your favorite i guess that you've that you've done so far i mean oh th so there's this one time where converse um basically said that they weren't gonna put shoes on billboards they're gonna put my art um what? in 2020 and that was amazing um that was wow. unbelievable um it was like it's almost like you know people were walking like driving through los angeles driving through my instagram page like wow tons of stuff like all kinds of things some of it was like black history month some of it was like you know juneteenth or literally like mr rogers or like all kinds uh -huh. of stuff that i that i've done um that was great and then the the, the target thing um you know I, I re envisioned like three different uh, Marvel superheroes, Black Panther, Storm, and Miles Morales. And seeing that like in the stores on uh -huh. clothing, um, that's maybe the one of the coolest things. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that's so cool. Everyone needs to head to your local Target, or maybe it's not local, yeah. but you could probably still find it right now in stores uh -huh. and, uh, and uh, grab something for yourself. That's so cool. Thank you. yeah let's see here what else i think at this point i'm i'm looking at um what where i can push um the darker parts and the lighter parts okay um a little bit more um where i can accentuate the the wrinkles and things like that mm -hmm. um so that'll be mostly you're doing, um, you're using the smudge tool right now, I guess. For the um, just part, uh, or... brush, regular brush. Oh, okay. Um, so you're just putting more like strokes a, on. A black. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, thanks more so that, um, yeah. That's very cool. Um, Becca said, I bounce between Cintiq and Intuos too. Glad I'm not alone. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Workflow uh, buddies. <laughs> I, I started off on on the Intuos, mm -hmm. um, on the tablet. And so um, I'm very used to like not having my hand on the screen. <laughs> so oh, okay. it's, it's, yeah, it's, that's the most natural for me, I guess I would say. Okay, interesting, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I feel like uh, everyone uses uh, iPads, myself included. So it's really interesting to see someone yeah. with a different kind of workflow. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't really have like a mega desktop or anything like that. So I'm just like, hmm, I, yeah. I don't think an Intuos tablet would be for me at this point. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool though. So, are you thinking about any? Um, like, well, you, this, the whole, I guess, inspiration for this piece was your Cameroonian ancestors, like the thought of an ancestor, like, do you ever create stories or like entire narratives around like people that you illustrate yeah. or anything like that? Yeah. Sometimes I, I do like, um, like for Juneteenth, um, a while back, like looking at, um, you know my what I would say my great 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 grandparents um in Texas and in Galveston um and you know just trying to I think it one one very powerful thing is just like connecting the dots of history um through art and sometimes I'm just like I'm just gonna tell this story in the way that I I can you know visualize it myself because there we I don't off, a lot of times people don't have a lot of you know actual factual concrete evidence and you know records of mm. you know their ancestors um and so it's just that kind of idea of just like I'm just going to I'm just going to create the my own you know version of what happened in history that's um, really cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a really cool way of uh, sort of feeding into the creativity that goes into your portraits and stuff like that. That's a really unique uh, perspective and a really interesting way of going about that. So mm -hmm. everyone remember that uh, 
art is also narrative too. And uh, you yes. could also bring that into your work and let that inspire Absolutely. you for sure. Yeah. So you had mentioned earlier that when you're doing clothing or like you're thinking about clothing, you had mentioned like about maybe you'll include certain patterns or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You're just making sort of like strokes, but do you ever use like a pattern like stamp brush or something? Or do you just like do it um, just sort of stroke by stroke on your own? Yeah, usually just like whatever, um, whatever pattern it, it's um, just drawing it in. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't typically have like any any pattern any like stamp or anything that I bring in just like trying to make something up from the just whatever brush strokes that's so cool though I feel like there's a brush for everything now <laughs> so yeah. it's like you could think of any sort of brush uh to to make your workflow sort of sped up or something mm -hmm. I feel like the brush probably exists somewhere yeah sometimes I'll cool. to I'll add more sunlight mm -hmm. um kind of like behind like right behind the neck shoulder oh. area mm -hmm. um never too much sunlight yeah right I think it's just I mean it's beautiful and it really just like has adds this burst of life and light I felt that way when you were um adding a that little faint like orange tint to the nose and like the lips like just mm -hmm. those little bits yeah. um make a big difference and it's and like then, beautiful. well sometimes there's too much sunlight but um, okay <laughs> but um I'll I'll do that as well like um like whatever Sometimes I'll just like figure out like what other areas of the face might need some more like glow. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's just too much and I'll just forget it. But yeah, but that that's, you know, one good thing about having, you know, making that an, another layer is you can just like kind of erase. If it's too much, just, you know, cut back, erase on it. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, we've got a little less than 20 minutes left in the stream, but okay, everyone can keep bringing in their, their questions in the chat. Keep showing Nicholas some love. It's been a very, uh, mm. like, amazing stream for me to watch because this is a, a wonderful uh, change of uh, pace for me and a, a discipline that I'm not well versed in. So I'm just like, I'm an, an admirer, but being able to see it uh, come to life in real time is really special so thank you thank you guys everybody who has joined us like i appreciate it like taking the time out to just come and hang and you know it means a lot so thank you <laughs> let's see hmm. i need to check this hmm. Okay, um, Evie, we've been talking a lot about color and Evie had a question. How does Nicholas use color? Is it a simple palette um, by preference? So do you have like maybe a palette that you're usually drawn to or how does that work for you? Um, I think, I feel like it changes all the time. Um, there's there's no, I, I just experiment every week or something different. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's so many times where, like right now, I'm I'm using the smudge again to to bring in some of the some of the sunlight and just like sometimes I'll just like really play around with the you know the lines and you know I, with I I cannot tell you guys how much I love like smudge at a hundred percent like oh my gosh that's it's so just cool. so fun like. Do it, hundred percent smudge. It, <laughs> it will change your life. Yeah, um, just go for it. <laughs> but it helps. Like sometimes it just helps. Like add more color and and bring in you know more patterns. Maybe there's like for this. Maybe there's like a a face paint or something. Yeah. Um, and so one thing I like to do is like whenever whenever I have that color, like like on for this one, I feel like 
that overlay of the sun, like the orange is is what is the best complement to the skin color for this piece, particular piece. Okay. So I'll take that and um, just start to incorporate it more, like even in the hair and just incorporate it some more oranges into the, into the piece. Um, but there are so many pieces where there's like this purple, I love purple washes also. Okay. <laughs> um, like purple, I don't know. I, I, for many of my pieces, I have purple wash <laughs> just because it just, it's just cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and like maybe for more nighttime stuff, like mm -hmm. that's a, or in, in the case of like Wakanda forever, like more like ancestral playing kind of thing. Uh huh. I was thinking um, that too. Yeah. Yeah. That's always fun to do. Um, so yeah, it's, whatever whatever the situation calls for really that's really cool um, yeah color is always so tricky at least for me personally I'll speak for, for myself I'm almost like <laughs> I feel like I just want to incorporate too much color or not enough color and then I'm just like I don't know what's happening yeah, <laughs> yeah. but again another great thing about the that one extra layer one layer <laughs> one layer is good but you know two yeah layers Two or yeah. three layers. So usually my my Sunday sketches are about like two to three layers. Max. Okay. Two three layers. Um, yeah. And, and you said you take three hours on those or one? Yeah, anywhere from one to three. Usually, usually I would say two ish. Okay. Hours. Like the yeah. sweet spot. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes I will like do another layer. Like if I feel like I've done enough enough on this overlay layer. I'll do mm -hmm. like another overlay layer, um, and maybe um, maybe because it like it needs even more, you know, you know maybe there's like a whole entire wash, right? Yeah. Um, and then on that one, that can that color can change or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I think. Yeah, for this one, for this one, I think I'll stick with this. Yeah, um, just like on that one section of the face as opposed to just like the entire portrait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is really lovely. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, maybe sometimes, maybe it's like the idea is like sometimes less is more. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. <laughs> yep, yep. Um. Yeah. And then, so what I was doing earlier was just like mm -hmm. adding, continuing to add more pattern. Um, okay. Yes. Continue. So then, like I was saying, like if, if I feel like, you know, it'll help tell the story of whatever, whatever I'm trying to tell, then I'll just like keep adding more, more little details here and there. And again, like I was saying at the beginning, um, there with all of the paint that's on actual canvas like uh -huh. you're gonna have a lot of highlights and shadows um so that's a lot of the typically the final thing for me is like um even on like I'm on the overlay layer right now and I might just add like a little bit of just take the black brush on the overlay layer mm -hmm. and um black or you know maybe it's a dark red or something and just add a little bit of um shadow like where where there's like if I want this to feel like actual paint mm -hmm. of these lines um then I'm gonna add a little shadow add a little highlight um so I might take the white also and just throw that you know on there nice so that's um, really what helps you harken back to the traditional feel of just like actual paint yeah bring it into the digital space mm -hmm. that is very cool we've got about 10 minutes left so we're going to try and uh if you're in the chat right now have more questions we will try to get in as many as we can um as we're wrapping things up but um, Evie said, I just noticed the canvas size. What's ideal for creating art prints that you found so far? So is there like a certain dimension mm -hmm. that you work in? 
Yeah, so this canvas is 14 by 16. Um, 14 by 16 like, inches? Yeah. Okay. 14 by 16 inches. Okay. Um, that's what I typically sell my, my Sunday sketch prints at. Okay. I think I really ended up on that because it's the it's a good size for Instagram to where like the the vertical dimension that is um it won't get cropped on Instagram. Oh uh, okay. <laughs> so it's like not too, you know, not too tall that it will get cropped. Okay. Um and it fits very nicely in my like little sleeves as I'm packaging the print. So, oh like, awesome. Yeah, it's a good it's a good 14 by 16. That's what I do. Awesome. Um, this uh, kind of random thing. Um, so you package your own prints and you you do all that yourself? Yeah. So I, I sign and stamp everything and wow. send it off. That's awesome. Personal artist touch. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah, I'm just adding like a few more little bit of highlights here and there. Oh, yeah. Is this... Uh, is this the uh, the first brush that you used at the beginning of the piece, or is this? Yeah, same brush. Okay. Yeah, you really have only used yeah. like yeah, maybe three. three brushes or like one or two. Yeah, I usually stick with just this one brush, um, uh -huh. but sometimes like if there's a little bit of dusting or something like on the nose here, yeah, I'll grab that other one or a little bit if I want it to be a little bit scratchier. Yeah, um, that other one. Wow, that's amazing. I could never. I'd, I'm just like brush crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, what about this one and this one and this right. one? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Storm is like, wow. May says, so informative, so creative, just wonderful. Oh, thank you, guys. <laughs> so much love coming from the chat. This has been so lovely. Thank you. And I have learned a lot as well. <laughs> And the best part mm -hmm. about Adobe Live is that you can watch three plays as many times as you like. So yes. if you miss something, feel free to pause, replay, this and watch true. it again. So no worries there. <laughs> so you're going in with a little bit more details and you're using, yeah. well, I guess it's not quite black, but just like a darker brush mm -hmm. and going over that, <clears throat> overlay la that overlay layer. Yeah, and I, I feel like... The overlay layer is great to just add final um, darks and lights and like um, I'm always like looking at the eyes like do I feel like there's enough shadow there does it need because like you can always go very heavy um, mm -hmm. if you need to um, like in the cracks in there and right okay do I need more um, and also like with the eyes um, I feel like the eyes, like it can get really cartoony if there's like too much white in the eyes. Oh, okay. Um, so I try to keep it pretty dark or like, you know, you see the, like the whites of the eyes a little bit, but it doesn't take a lot. Just like a little bit of, you know. Yeah. A little bit of light in there to get the idea. Um, yeah. And then... One more layer, because I had to write my name. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Yes, yeah. that's perfect. Yes, yeah, so you always have to yeah. sign your work. Usually I'll put like my, my Nicholas stamp or whatever. Um, oh, you have a brush stamp for your signature? Well, it's just like a, a PNG file that I bring in all the time. Okay. <laughs> um, but in this case, I'm just going to write right here. There it is. That's amazing. I mean, th this is a great reminder. Everyone sign your work so sign that work. people can know <laughs> that it's yours. Yeah. Hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. This is just lovely. So, I think it's pretty good. I think it's done almost, almost. I have a random question now that we're reaching the the conclusion of this do you ever name like give these subjects that are just sort of 
from your narratives that you come up with? Do you ever name them or anything like that? <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll always, well, not always, but like if it's the, uh, no, yes. If it's, if I'm like selling the print, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, it'll have I'll, a title. I'll, the I'll people have some title. sort of name. Yeah. Sometimes I'll actually like name the characters. Um, but a lot of times it's just like a description of whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, so like this would probably be called like Cameroonian elder or something like that. Some, mm. Something just something a direct description. Time. Yeah, know. right. <laughs> it doesn't that. have to be overthought. And I feel like yeah. that's also part of the, the whole theme of this stream has been like, yes. don't overthink it. It's <laughs> fine. It. Yeah, that's it. Done. <laughs> post it <laughs> yeah right post the thing mm -hmm. do the thing and I think this has been really lovely and this idea of a lot of your work and I guess that you were talking about the opportunities that you've seen in your career coming from the artist therapy and meditating with your Sunday sketches and stuff like that and I guess you're a strong advocate for uh for passion projects and personal projects for artists then yes absolutely take the time even if you feel like you have no time, take the time to, you know, do your own stuff. And, you know, amazing things can come from that. And especially, you know, like I said, you know, make some artivism, look at what's happening in the world. But even if it's just like painting anything, even if you feel like you're not a painter or an artist, like I tell people everywhere, like you, everybody is creative. First of all, everybody has creativity. Um, but like, take, even if it's like pencil and paper, like just make something, you know, um, just take some time out of your day and make something. Um, it's helpful. No, definitely. I think that's a wonderful piece of advice, meditating, sitting with your craft and just getting out of your head and just get the ideas down, whether mm -hmm. it's digitally or traditionally, just get them out of your head yeah. and onto the canvas or what have you. So... Absolutely. This has been lovely. Can you give like a quick little recap for all of us, like what we've seen today and just like a quick little rundown yes. of this process? Absolutely. Um, so we started off talking about <laughs> paint on canvas. Uh, all my digital paintings, I try to give them that, you know, oil painting kind of feel, um, all those millions of little details. Mm -hmm. um, and then Basically, um, and I will just quickly do a little paint over kind of thing. Um, yeah. But what I what I started off with was just like my typical like what I call added subtract method. Um, throw some paint on the canvas as fast as you can. Um, get a general shape. You know, like something is there, and then add and subtract. So the subtract is like chipping away at what, you know, what doesn't fit and what doesn't go there. And for me, that's a very therapeutic thing, just like getting it down there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I per personally don't like like clean lines and all that good stuff. And I, everything is sketchy and loose. Um, so then I will quickly like throw on some shadows and just really start to get the details down, eyes, nose, um, all that. And then um, just start adding more details until voila. You voila, have a like <laughs> magic. Step number two, complete the training. <laughs> Step number two, sit yeah. down and put the, the strokes down. <laughs> yes. That's insane because honestly, yeah. like you going just that brief recap, I'm just like, oh my gosh, we really did just start with this yeah. abstracted form <laughs> and just some strokes. And I, I literally can't yeah. believe that we're here right now. That's amazing. We're here. We're here. Um, it's yeah, amazing. Just, it's just like the process of just adding more and more, um, you know, strokes and just more and more stuff. And it doesn't have to be a bunch of layers, like one layer, maybe two. Yeah. Uh, Oh and, my god. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, okay. thank you so much, Nicholas, thank for you. being on the stream with us. Yeah. And thank you, everyone in the chat, anyone who's watching the replay. You guys have been amazing. And thank you for your questions. 
Um, before we wrap up here, stay tuned and join graphic designer Anika Agarwal in a new episode of Let's InDesign. Learn helpful tips for styling your text as she shows you how to use paragraph styles, character styles, and auto style your text to quickly and easily create your layouts. So thank you so much. And we'll see you guys in the next stream. Have a yeah. wonderful day and time. Thank you, Lana. And thank you, Nicholas. This has been great. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.